All right, today we're going to review the area of 3D shapes. This is something that you have covered before multiple times in elementary school and sixth grade. So we're going to fly through these. Just make sure that you remember the formulas. It's real important that you remember those and write those down if you don't have them already. Um, tomorrow or next time we meet, we will be able to do an activity with um, the formulas to make sure that you have those memorized. So um, as you can see here, the materials you're going to need, your style notebook calculator, a yellow, orange, and red crayon. That's what you're going to need every time you watch one of these videos. So go ahead and pause me if you need to and grab those materials, and then we'll get started. If you have the materials already, um, just go ahead and start looking at the vocabulary you're going to need to know, perimeter, area, and base. Base meaning bottom of the shape. Height, straight up and down. Radius and diameter, the difference between those two. You're going to want to make sure you understand how radius and diameter relate to each other. Okay? Alright, so um, as you can see here, this first example is a rectangle. That's probably the shape that you're most familiar with um, from since elementary school. Let me back up here so you can see that a little better. Alright, so you've got seven feet by one yard. Please make sure that the first thing you do is make sure you have the same units of measurement. If you don't, you're going to need to change those. And as you can see here, we've got feet and yards. We are going to want to do that. The easiest way to do that is take the largest unit of measurement and break it down into smaller pieces. The yard would be the largest. One yard is equal to three feet. Now that we have the same unit of measurement, we plug it into the formula. I am going to expect that you write the formula every single time, fill in the key pieces of information, and solve. Also notice the units. Feet squared. Real important here. Make sure you're writing down the examples as we go. If you need to pause me, you certainly can. You've got a rectangle here. You've got the formula, the pieces filled in, and then your final answer with their units squared. Area is always unit squared. All right, let's take a look at example two. You have a parallelogram. Remember the formula for parallelogram is base times height. Again, base times height. Now, there are two ways that you're going to find the height. Sometimes you're going to see the height inside the shape. Sometimes you're going to see the height outside the shape. Just always look for that right angle and that will key you in as to where we're looking for the height. If you think about when you measure your height, either at the doctor's or at home, you're going to stand straight up and down to decide how tall you are. Same thing with a shape. Height is always straight up and down. All right, so we've got base times height. You've got your base and your height, same unit of measurement, so we're good there. Plug those things in and solve using your units squared. Area is always unit squared, and that's because we're multiplying an inch times another inch. Okay? All right. All right, next um, shape is a triangle. The biggest thing students forget is that one half piece. You want to make sure you're always doing one half base times height. One half is key here. We have a lot of information here. Make sure you're keying in on what's the base and what's the height. Remember the base and the height will make a perpendicular angle. Looking for that right angle always. There's the symbol. So now you know your base and your height has to be your eight and your three. The five is extra information you do not need. You have to be able to distinguish upon what you need and what you're looking for and what you can eliminate. So we've got one half times eight times three. When you type that into your calculators, you can type them in any order that you'd like. Can you think of what formula that was? Can you get it? Commutative property is changing the order. It doesn't matter whether you type in one half times eight times three or three times one half times eight. You can do a half of eight is four and times that by three. You can do a half of three and then times that by eight. It does not matter which order. Your final answer is 12 centimeters squared. Centimeters squared, units squared always. Don't forget to write the one half. That's super important. Go ahead and make note of that. Put a star next to it in your notes. And of course, formula and units every single time where you are going to lose points. That is super important to keep track of. All right, take a look at example four here. We've got a trapezoid. Now remember, a trapezoid, the definition is it has exactly one pair of parallel lines. So typical trapezoids are these two shapes up at the top. That's the typical, most common view of a trapezoid. Here you have one with two, four, and four and a half. Now this shape is one that you may not be familiar with. This is one that some sixth grades have covered and some have not. So that could be hit or miss there. So let's take a few more minutes with this one. This is the formula. 
1 half times the height times the sum of the two bases. The reason why we have this 1 half here, typically we only use the 1 half for the triangle, but if you look carefully at the shape and we draw a little right angle here, do you see the triangles coming into play? There are some triangles built into trapezoids, so that's where the 1 half comes from. There's also some rectangles, so that's why we're multiplying the base and the height together. So that's kind of where the formula came from. Looking here, we've got the height is the straight up and down, that gives you the 4, and the two bases. It does not matter which order you put them in. Again, the commutative property takes care of that. You're going to be adding the two bases together. Remember, order of operations, you want to add what's in parentheses first, and then multiply everything together. When you're all done, you should get 13 feet squared. Remember, you can pause me at any time. Just go ahead and hit that pause button and catch up to where we're at if you need more time to write this down. If you've got it, let's keep going. Here's a trapezoid I'd like you to try on your own since it is a fairly new shape. Let's go ahead and have you copy that shape down, give it a pause, and go ahead and work it out on your own. See how you do. All right, now that you're back, let's go ahead and work it out. You should have the formula written first. Fill in what we know. Our height is our straight up and down number. That's the four. And then the two bases added together. So you are multiplying in your calculators one half times four times this answer, which is 68. I've already done this out on my calculator, and this is what you should have. 136 feet squared. Make sure you have that feet squared, and make sure you have that formula to start with. All right, now looking at circles. You've covered circles before. Again, this is a quick review. You should have radius and diameter under control. Which one's which? If you have one radius and one diameter, radius times two equals diameter. Key thing is, make sure that you remember which one's which. A lot of people mix those up. Another um, change this year you'll see is in the directions it might say find the exact amount or find the approximate amount. So here's what you're going to do for that. Anytime it says exact, you're going to keep that pi symbol. And in your answer, you're going to see the pi symbol there. I know that looks kind of weird, but because pi is a long, never-ending decimal without a pattern, we are rounding whenever we use that 3.14, which most people use. But that's a rounded answer. That's the approximate. If you're doing the exact, you're going to keep that pi symbol. So we have pi times radius squared is our formula. Pi times 1.5 times 1.5 again, which is the same as 1.5 squared. We're going to multiply the numbers together, but keep that pi. Keep that pi symbol in your answer. I know it looks weird, but that's 2.25 pi miles squared. We're keeping the pi because it is that never-ending decimal. If you were finding the approximate answer, you would take that pi and break it down into a decimal form. So you're doing 3.14 times that 1.5 squared. And that would give you 7.065 miles squared. Work it out in your calculator, go ahead and give it a pause, check it for yourself and make sure you see. You can compare these two answers, and if you do 2.25 times 3.14 in your calculator, you will get 7.065, seven and 65 thousandths. Make sure you're always writing the formula and the units each time, and anytime you see exact, you're going to keep that pi symbol instead of writing it as a decimal. Just keep the pi symbol in your answer.